Again, the Butte Mountaineers are going to have to find an answer for that defense. Hey there, what's going on? I'm Lauren Shahadi. And I have an answer for your need to look at the WVU Dayton matchup in depth, and his name is Gary Parrish. He joins us now. Gary, West Virginia has that aggressive man-to-man -man defense, also a confusing 1-3-1 zone. The success of the Mountaineers is the way they play defense, completely overpowering at times. How does Dayton counter it? It's going to be tough. I mean, this is a classic Bob Huggins team. It's not quite as physical as, uh, as the old Cincinnati teams that had Kenyon Martin and guys like that. But it, it is very much the makeup of its coach, and it's why you saw it uh, be able to knock off Duke last year in the NCAA tournament. These are tough kids, and it's because uh, Huggins recruits a certain, a certain mentality from a kid, and then, and then uh, he, he molds it into sort of fit his personality, which is very much a hard nose. we're going to guard. You know, we'll figure it out on offense. We'll, we'll score enough to beat you, but you're going to have a hard time scoring on us. And so, for Dayton, this is a tough matchup because, A, West Virginia is playing well right now, has been play, playing well lately. But, B, I'm a big fan of any Bob Huggins coach team just because of the way they play. Um, they'll go into this feeling confident, and it's a tough matchup for Dayton. And, Gary, you remember WVU upsetting the nation's number two team, Pittsburgh, in the Big East tournament. What did you see there that they need more of and can potentially take them far in this tournament? Well, I think Devin Ebanks. I mean, it's the kid who came in as a heralded, elite-level uh, prospect. Kind of got off to an uneven start. And I remember talking to Bob Huggins uh, back uh, at the um, event when they lost to Davidson in Madison Square Garden. He's, you know, he was just crushed after that loss because it was one of those where they didn't have a full uh, complement of players and then uh, Stephen Curry just got going at the end. Uh, but he said, look, Stephen uh, is going to be fine. It's just going to take a little bit. But he's a talented kid. He's doing the right things. And it'll happen sooner or later. And, and, and it's happening now. The same way that USC has been able to take advantage of DeMar DeRozan's emergence um, out in L.A., same thing happening at West Virginia with Ebanks. He had 20 in the win over Pitt, um, 22 in the loss to Syracuse. And to me, the, the most impressive thing in the, in the loss to Syracuse was uh, he knocked down two really tough free throws at the end that, honestly, freshmen don't make those. I mean, not, in that, not on that stage, not in that moment. And he knocked them down, cool the school. So this is a kid that's uh, coming into his own, is looking like the NBA prospect he was supposed to be. And as long as he's playing well, uh, then they're pretty good. Okay, well, Dayton has a freshman of their own. When you look at Dayton, this is a team that has a strong sense of team. They obviously have forward Charles Little, but also a freshman force in Luke Fabrizius. They're going to need all of it. Do you agree with me? Oh, they, they need him and more. I, mean, I think the key to, to what Dayton needs to do is Chris Wright. He's a sophomore who, uh, his absence um, is very much what kept them out of the NCAA tournament last season. we got a, a big de debate this year about Patrick Mills and St. Mary's, whether – uh, St. Mary's belonged in the tournament, you know, because the games they lost happened without Mills, and he was on, you know, coming back and so on and so forth. Dayton was in a, in a very similar position last season, uh, just uh, less high profile because uh, uh, Chris Wright didn't come back until actually the NIT. But when he was on the floor for them last season, they were very good. So I'm not a surprise. I'm not surprised that they ended up in this position again. He's a guy that gets 13 and seven, uh, a very good high level. A-10 player. Sometimes we discount uh, guys who go to Dayton and we say, oh, well, he must not have been good enough. No, no, no. This kid could play anywhere in the country. He went to Dayton and, uh, and he's averaging 13-7, and seven, like I said. And he's the key. If he gets going, uh, this team is capable. And, and don't forget, this is already a, a Dayton team that caught one Big East team. They beat Marquette. They got 26 wins overall. They finished second in the A-10. It's a capable team. It's a capable team, but the biggest concern for Dayton regarding the offense made just 7 of 25 three-point attempts in the loss to Duquesne, shot just 41.9% from the floor. With WVU's defense, you're going to have to do better than that, Gary. Yeah, you're not going to win a game like this shooting like that, uh, particularly from beyond the arc. Um, You've you got to make shots. Any time where you're probably outmanned, um, it, it is crucial to make shots. You're not just going to get into a half-court set and beat somebody, you know, running layup to layup to layup to layup. That's not the way this stuff works. Uh, when underdogs win these games, it typically has something to do with A, turnovers, or B, three-point shooting. And so, uh, again, um, Dayton cannot afford to, to miss jumpers. they, they got to make up. Uh, otherwise, um, it, it'll be a long day because they, they're going to have a hard time getting stuff around the basket because West Virginia is very, very physical and, and again, a, a traditional – a typical Bob Huggins coach defensive team. 
the Mountaineers stifling on defense. Like you said, the Flyers, Mountaineers, 3 o'clock on March 20th. Watch every game from the first round to the NCAA championship live online for free with NCAA March Madness on demand. Go to NCAA.com to find out more. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm Lauren Shahadi, and I'll see you real soon.